sign in sheet is at the welcome table, so please make sure that you sign in um, because uh, information will be provided to you by all of those folks that sign in. Uh, the presentation, a video, and other materials will be posted to the planning department's website following this meeting. Um, and also, follow-up information can be um, requested from Alyssa. And there is Alyssa. Right. 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 Alright, so she's very good person to know. So we are going to uh, get kicked off here. And uh, first up is going to be uh, the Curb Appeal Branch Program. And Alyssa is going to kick us off and talk a little bit about that. Alyssa. Alyssa. All right, don't worry about the mic. Yeah, I'll squeeze them. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending. We've got a lot of partners that are participating tonight. Um, we've got 75 more students here. Hello. Uh, Bridge Shore. Tal is here. Uh, Omaha House Authority. We've got a couple of folks in the back that are here as well. City of Omaha Planning Department. Kelly's here. We've got Lewis. Wyatt is recording for us today. Um, and then we also have Christian from the Human Rights and Relations Department. Lindsay, who's the vet, and we've got Andre here to assist as well. Uh, Nebraska Business Development Center, Daniel is here. Uh, Nebraska Enterprise Fund, you folks here, thank you for coming. And then Heartland Workforce Solutions, they're here with 75 more. And we also have from the Catholic Church as well. So thank you to everybody who's participating in this event. So what, what we'll kind of do is we'll go through this new grant program that we've got available, talk about the contract requirements for that. Then we'll go into some other construction opportunities that are available in the Sinai area. And then we conclude tonight the handout that you picked up when you arrived. That has information about each one of our resource provider tables, so you can go and speak to any of the individuals that we've got here. Maybe ask some follow-up questions, get some follow-up information uh, following tonight's meeting. So I will go into the Curbfield Program's new contractor, new approved contractor list. Um, what this is is a new grant program specifically for this neighborhood, the CNI neighborhood. Um, We've got the boundary shown on the map. It's um, going to provide some exterior improvements to owner occupied homes. Uh, those homes need to be along key streets, which are shown in purple in the map. And then also, if the homes are eligible, if they're near some of our other major CNI housing developments as well. Um, and we just wrapped up before this meeting started. Uh, we met with homeowners that uh, occupy their homes on these key corridors. If you know someone or are you yourself a homeowner um, on this corridor, you probably would have received an, um, a flyer at your house. But if you didn't or if you know someone that may qualify, uh, please talk to one of us after the meeting. But we just wrapped up that meeting before this one started. So the improvements then need to be visible from the street. And they can be any of the eligible improvements that are shown on this slide here. Do you want to point out that the maximum grade of work for this project is $19,999. Um, so these are, these are not structural improvements. These are things to enhance the neighborhood or enhance this community. So some of the eligible enhancements, we've got exterior painting, we've got tree planting, we've got porch improvements, and then fencing as well. And then if any of those elements that I just talked about are on the application, and the owner can also tie in some other enhancements as well, and I've got those listed there. So we're looking, as far as this contractor application is concerned, we're looking for painters, landscapers, you know, folks that do fencing, those are the kind of, kind of works that are kind of work that we're looking for for this specific program. So I've got, we've got several steps to this process. I'll highlight the ones that I think will be most relevant to you. Um, so the homeowner applications will be due on June 20th. And then after that, a committee will select the projects that will go forward. We're anticipating five projects at this point with um, maybe subsequent applications in the next year or so. 
Um, so then that selection committee will take those applications and then they will take that information to our construction specialist at the city who then will review that information, prepare a scope of work, and then essentially get that project ready for bid. So because maybe for those of you that have worked on our city projects before, that might be a process that you're a little bit more familiar with. And so then the construction specialist will put the information out, the lowest and best bidder will be awarded project and then essentially be contracted for that project, your contract will be with the home. And then the construction specialist will guide you kind of throughout the course of that project to help you with any you know, reporting information that we need and then we'll work with Lewis and his team to get that completed. Next slide please, thank you. So we do have a contractor application. We have copies available tonight if anybody would like to pick one up. And uh, start keeping it here, that would be perfectly fine. Um, City and 75 North are developing this approved list, and like I said, it's specifically for this program. Anybody that wants to bid on the Riverfield Program's projects need to be on that approved list. Uh, like I said, we've got the application materials here tonight, and then those in that information will actually go to Lewis at our office, who then will review the application and kind of go from there. Um, and one other, one other item that I do want to point out is that some of you may be familiar with some of the other programs that the city has, some of our other approved lists, specifically within the housing rehab programs. If you're already on that list, um, you're already considered part of this curb and field program as well. So you don't need to submit a separate application, you've already completed something similar. Um, so if you have questions about that, you can ask us to just a little check and make sure that you are on the list. But as long as you're in good standing on one of our existing lists, you don't need to apply for this new program. So the application materials, I do have a copy of the application you can put up on the screen and just kind of walk through it too. Um, so you need to, in order to complete the process and to complete the application, We'll need some documentation of uh, your company registration with the state of Nebraska, uh, your state contractor certificate, and if it's available, we'll also want to see a copy of your insurance certificates. That you might not have when you apply, but we certainly want to see it or have a copy of that certificate if you're awarded a project and start to do work. So something to keep in mind. Um, we also have a citizen attestation form, and then we request uh, bank statements from the previous, from your previous two months as well. There's some other documents that you'll also want to know. I want to make sure that you're current with the city CC1 form, contract compliance form, that's done through the Human Rights and Relations Department. Um, that is all done online. If you have questions, uh, we can assist you with that as well. There's city contractor policy that you might want to be familiar with. We do have an NDEWBE plan as well that assists with our outreach to minority women owned businesses. And then this project um, falls under OHA Section 3 policy, so it would also be helpful to be familiar with the Section 3 program, what the expectations are for that program. As far as bidding requirements, uh, some of those may be a little bit of a repeat, but what what we're looking at here is that a construction specialist will send out a notice to those that are on the curb appeal programs list. Um, in that notice, you'll find out you know, what the project is, the information about the project. Generally, we'll have an open house or a pre bid type meeting also for the project, so you'll know the date and kind of where to where go to attend that. And you'll also know the deadline to submit your bid as well. So have that information, like I said, the lowest and best bidder would be awarded the contract, and then you enter into an agreement with the homeowner and work with the construction specialist for the rest of the project. So then, our program requirements, we, so this program, it is not a Davis Bacon project. We have other construction projects going in this area that are, um, but we do want to clarify that it's not Davis Bacon, but you do still have to track your labor hours for your construction workers. And that's where the Section 3 requirement goes into effect. I, I am the Section 3 coordinator for the city. If you have any answer any questions that you have about the Section 3 program, but one thing I want to point out is that part of documenting your construction labor hours is also to, also to be aware of any Section 3 businesses that are on your project, maybe your Section 3 business, and also to know if you have any Section 3 workers 
for targeted section three workers. They do have some definitions for section three, targeted section three, but I want to highlight specifically the qualifications for a section three business concern. Um, you can meet any one of the three qualifications that I have listed on there. So if you are 51% or more, um, 51% or more of your ownership of your company is from a low income person. And for, this, for Omaha and our area, that figure currently is $53,300. So if you're an owner, you're the majority owner of your company, your income is below that amount, you qualify as a section three business concern. We also um, have qualifications if 75% or more of the business construction labor hours are performed by low income folks. So again, below that $53,300 threshold. And then the last way is if the majority of the business ownership comes from somebody who lives in public housing or section eight assisted housing as well. So those are the three ways that you could qualify. And if anybody feels like you might meet those qualifications, I can help sign you up tonight. It takes maybe 10 minutes. I've got at least one individual that we actually completed this application today. So it's a pretty quick process, um, and I'd be happy to walk you through that. Uh, in addition to Davis Bacon Section 3, there's an affidavit for Employee Classification Act. Again, just making sure that you're not misclassifying workers. And then for this project, SAM registration is not required, but um, contractors and subcontractors are still required to sign a form that essentially indicates that you are not debarred or ineligible to work on any of the projects. So then, now we're getting into the CNI construction schedule, and I. Do we do questions? Yeah, you are. Yeah, if you want to do any questions about this program in specific. Actually, I can Okay. Okay, so this is the application. Like I said, we have copies available. The first portion of the application asks you to enter your company's information. Um, and we'll also, you can also enter information about insurance. And then the second page also goes into additional information about your business qualifications. This is where you could also indicate if you're a minority owned business, if you're a woman owned business or Section 3 business as well, so you can ask some information about that, and then you can identify the individuals who are involved in your company. You can identify the management of your company, and then we also are asking for any information that you have about some, any certifications or trainings that your business has done as well. So if you have lead certifications, you can get to know that if you've got a specific contractor license you want us to be aware of, we kind of that information as well. Um, but we're looking for additional information about some of your past projects, such as some exterior painting that you've done, or some landscaping, or if you feel like there's other relevant experiences that you've had recently that you'd like us to know about, that's where you can indicate it as well. Um, we do have a spot for severe building material references, and then we do ask for bank account information in your last two bank statements. So that is the majority of the application. We've got a signature page right there, and then the last part, we've included a checklist to kind of help you figure out what all needs to go into this as well. But, you know, we, we're here to help ask answer any questions you might have. Maybe there's some documents that you're not quite sure what to provide or what we're asking for. Um, we'd be happy to answer those questions. Once an application is made, if there's any information that's missing, uh, Lewis or somebody from our office can follow up with you and kind of guide you through that process as well. So that was a lot of information about the Curve and Field program. Are there any questions about anything I just went over? I have a question. Yes. Um, I applied for a different program that works with the city, and you can do your like renovator, but then you kind of have another, um, or you have a supervisor. It was a totally different class. 
and it wasn't the basic lead renovator course, it was they had lead worker and then a supervisor course, which was I don't know if you're still using that. Because I didn't get it because the person that was gonna do my the, who was a lead supervisor was having problems getting his certification from he was from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And so he couldn't they weren't bringing them in. So I've already well that was with the other um, program, I don't know if this is gonna be the same thing, but I had a really hard time. And I had people from my employees go to classes for the lead worker on portion, but we never got in because of the lead supervisor part. So, and I don't know if they're still doing that or not. Yeah, that's an option. I know right now it is difficult to try to get into like the, the lead assessor so you can be able to assess the level of lead on a project or property and then the type of remediation work that you can do. And I think it was, there's an organization called Midwest. Yeah. So where you can yeah. And that's but, where they my employees went to. But then they didn't have any classes right. for the supervisor part of it. But I don't know if you guys took that out of that, the supervisor one, you still have to have that certificate. Mm -hmm. Because that's a lot more. Um, to try to accommodate for that, what, what we do is the construction specialist, when he's, particularly for this carbon field program, when he's doing the work right up, we're making sure that we make the references of the lead safe practices mm -hmm. to be incorporated in the construction specialist is lead certified, so he's on the job of watch monitoring the performance of the contractors during the work. Okay. And that would qualify to make sure that the lead safe practices are being addressed. Okay, so then we don't need to get that supervisor. So what I have already with the I mean, it, just dealing with the difficulty of trying to even get in. Right. That's, it was a hard. It was hard. Even just. I mean, I know the city paid for um, some um, classes for us mm -hmm. that we got reimbursed once they they took the class, and I had like about six people who went through the class. Mm -hmm. And so, because they had to have a certain amount of people, well, then the city reimbursed us for those classes. Are they still going to do the same thing that they did with that? Or? I, I can't speak to that. I'm just, I can tell you how we're trying to address it because we know that there is an issue of trying to get into that, that yeah, program. It's hard to get into. It. So I think I waited like three years and I could my supervisor part of it that we couldn't get it that good. And because of the training, there was no training available here in Omaha for that. That was the answer that new was training mm -hmm. company. Hopefully it's changed and they fixed it. It can be so hard to but like I said, we, we accommodate for that by making sure that in the work right up, it specifies you know, techniques. And it's also to make sure that you don't disturb the lead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. 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 Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Todd Lieberman. I'm with Bridgeford Development, and we are working with 75 North, the Omaha Housing Authority, and uh, the City of Omaha on some really exciting um, developments over the next couple of years. And in addition to the curb appeal program, there are going to be some bidding opportunities coming up. So. Presentation today outlines where the developments are taking place and then timelines on when bidding opportunities are going to be available. And um, this is an update meeting, they'll be, they'll be exactly this one. Our, our goal is to get the word out and make sure everyone who's interested in bidding on projects um, gets some bids um, because we want to hire as many people from the, um, the community as we can. So let's uh, let's move this really quick just to show you the projects that are happening. Davis Bridge is literally 100 feet from where we are. I would walk right through this wall, which would be interesting to watch uh, on its own. Um, I could get to this property, and it's on a hillside. There would be 41 units, um, and it's uh, property projects probably moving forward in the beginning of 2023. So there will be opportunities later this year um, for uh, some contractors bidding on the project. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a, a wood frame development 
which are slot on grade. There are um, seven six class, and one of the units is a, a leasing office. So there'll be opportunities for all small trim trades on the project. The development is uh, Davis Bay in section three, so there are some compliance requirements on it, um, but it's a, it'll be a great, great development. Um, that's Davis Ridge, and I, there'll, be, there'll be more information later. I'm probably jumping ahead to the Kennedy Square West is up the street um, where the uh, Martin Luther King building is, um, right off of, uh, just down the street from Pinkney there. I can't remember the street that runs right here. Which one? Emmett. Emmett. Okay. Sorry, I'm uh, a little slow right now. Uh, Emmett, 30th Street. Um, that is a 2023 bid later in the year, but it is uh, about a 40 Seven unit development will be a concrete podium with wood frame on top. Kennedy Square East is, um, there are two components of this. The first is an abatement and demolition bidding opportunity, which we're announcing is open today. So, the <laughs> opportunity for an abatement and some contracts and demolition to bid on um, the demolition of, of, of Spencer Homes. Um, that, that will then be followed up with new construction of 102 units in Kennedy Square East with the great ground at the end of the year. So there'll, there'll be two different opportunities for bidding on that. So we'll, we'll go through each one now in detail. Spencer Homes um, is the existing um, public housing development that currently is, there's a couple of tents left and once the pro property is, is empty, we'll move forward with um, abatement and demolition. There is a bid package and there are flyers here which you'd like me to take back with you. If you have any questions, you have a contact here and a hard copy will be available to see you all on Monday. With the bid package um, it will be a pre bidders meeting on May 26, which is a week from tomorrow at 9 a.m. and the bids are due June 10th. So this package will again be abatement and demolition. And there, there are details in the package that will help you with bidding. If there are any questions on this, and I, I recommend this, um, contact Will Portman, um, who is at our construction company, Bridgeshore Construction Management, BCM, um, who will be overseeing this bidding process. So it's very important to reach out early with questions and to, to make sure you're you know, you're, you're taking a look at the bid package as quick as possible. Um, we'll also, there's also outreach that's going on to various entities that are here in the room, so um, you should receive email with the bid package shortly. Um, everyone has the tables. Um, so that's, you want to get the word out far and wide. Uh, so on after the demolition takes place, we, we have to, um, we're going to break ground on the new construction phase of Kennedy Square East, which is on the location of the existing Spencer Homes. There'll be 102 units. Most of the units are one to three bedrooms. There's one very large um, single family home. You see a seven bedroom uh, part of the project and a mixture of mid-rise, which you can see in the corner here, and then townhome style units. A lot like what you see here at Highlander down the street. Um, this bid package will go out this summer, so we'll be uh, soliciting an RFP, so we'll be signed development drawings, which will accompany the RFP, and it will be a proposal with qualifications. So um, this will be uh, a, a selection firm to work with, and then uh, numbers will be defined once we have construction documents. But we, we see this as an opportunity to work with the general contractor to help in this uh, volatile environment, make sure the plans as we did ready to build or construct them. Um, the next phase I talked about, I made the joke that no one laughed at about walking through the wall. Um, that's Davis Ridge, which is right up the street here, literally right through the wall. Um, and this, these will be um, six flat type buildings. They're all walk-ups. The subcontractor bidding will be the, 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 the uh, later in 2022 with the mid-2023 groundbreaking. And uh, this is, uh, again, um, a concrete podium with wood frame above. Okay, later on, uh, the last phase of the project, we hope to get this bid package out 
be 2023, mid 2023 for Kennedy Square West. Um, this will be a mixture of a mid rise building with a concrete podium, with three levels of wood frame on top, and then some townhome style uh, buildings as well. And this is a, uh, there are two different sites. So one site is the um, site on um, gosh, Emmett, and then down the street um, is the, are the six, six units shown here at 30th of Miami. And so this is uh, an opportunity potentially for, for matching a, a large general contract with a small one he takes on the town home or we'll take different kinds of proposals at that time. So expect that in package to be uh, next year around this time, um, mid-2023. So um, we'll have separate meetings for each of these opportunities. The first is the pre-bid meeting that will occur on May 26th at 9 a.m. Is that, where is that? That being increases is it here? Probably here. Yes. We'll, uh, we can, uh, we'll, we'll have a follow-up to everyone who attended this meeting to make sure you receive notice of that pre-bid meeting on the 26th. And please take a flyer. Um, but we'll have additional meetings on each phase as we go. Um, and there'll be opportunities to answer questions, to get to know um, various folks that are working on the project. And uh, I think this is a great opportunity to help bring together um, you know, various groups that are interested in bidding on this project from trades to general contractors. And uh, at the end of the day, we hope that you know, the impact felt here, you know, the fact that we're in a new neighborhood, that we can do the same thing um, up the street and with Davis Ridge. And I think it's a great opportunity to work together to help rebuild um, Omaha. So if you have questions, I'm going to be here until about a little after 8 o'clock. i got a um, little bit of a drive, but uh, we really appreciate you coming to um, to, to learn about these opportunities and uh, we'll answer any questions you have. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Alyssa's well, got some things on the point. <laughs> Just a couple of slides. Um, so we'll talk about a few of the opportunities and then some of the requirements that go with these projects too. It's a little bit different than the Kirkwood Hill program, which is why I'm also coming back to talk about it again. Um, so, kind of as I said, we encourage all businesses to submit bids to participate in this project. We want to highlight specifically minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses. Um, the city contact for the MBE WBE program would be at Dantzler at our office. The, there's also the Small and Emerging Small Business Program, as Christian Espinoza is here to talk about that today as well. And then I'm going to contact the section of the program. And then we recognize that there are a lot of different types of business certifications that exist. So if you're not quite sure where to start or who to talk to first, the REACH team should be a great resource for you, and they can help redirect you to whatever questions you have. So then, really quickly, some of the federal requirements that go with this project. Again, it's a section three project. And so what we've done on comparable projects like Highlander Phase 4, um, we are requesting that contractors have a section three plan. So you'll identify your current workforce. We'll talk about the workforce that you would need for this project and if you intend to hire anybody also. And then you'll also, again, provide information about your construction plan. So we'll, you'll need to certify Section 3 contractors, and you'll also need to identify any Section 3 workers and targeted Section 3 workers. And generally with the targeted Section 3 worker group, those are individuals that live in the area that the project is based. So for this particular project, this particular neighborhood, the targeted population would be individuals from Spencer Homes or that live in other OHA property or Section 8. Well. So that's kind of the target base that you look for with the target population. It's in the Davis Bay project, so workers must be paid prevailing wages and must be paid on a weekly basis as well. And then there's a specific wage determination that identifies the types of construction work on the project and then the prevailing wage that goes with that work. And then if contractors and contractors who might commit your participants send supporting documentation as well. You know, if, you, if you use the apprentice, you need to have information about that. If you have special deductions that go out of the paycheck, so all the 
look at that information, fringe benefits, and look at that as well. And there's a lot of detail that goes with Davis Bacon, but you have resources that are here to help you with that and help guide you through the process. It's detailed, but again, it's, it's weekly certified payroll reports and just documentation to your compliance official, just indicating the kind of work that's going on in the project as well. We, I've got forums that are with me here tonight, so if you have questions about what Davis Bacon looks like, you know, what the certified payroll reports actually look like, I can show you those reports and kind of walk you through what I'm looking for when I review that information. We do require that contractors participate in e verify, and then if you're a general contractor, you're required to have SAM registration. If you're a subcontractor, we still need to get a statement from you that uh, you're not or you're, you're not ineligible to work at federal projects. Um, we do have a BDC staff. Daniel's here to talk about SAM registration, so if you're not quite sure, you know, if you've got that registration or what that process looks like, you would be a good resource to talk to you about that as well. And so now we can kind of go back to the questions. I don't know if there does anybody have any questions for Todd about the projects that you mentioned. No, so the 26 is for the abatement and demolition of, of Spencer Home Sold. So that is the current bid package that was just released for making the announcement today. It is due on June 10th. So that announcement was today, and the pre bid meeting will be on the 26th. The, the future projects I mentioned will, will be rolled out on a rolling basis over the next year or so. So there'll be opportunities as we go in separate phases. So the reports are, uh, the draft reports are included, um, so it can be bid different ways. So if a firm is a demolition firm that also does abatement work, we accept that. If you're bidding just the abatement side, you can do that as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's flexible, and I think the impact plays out um, opportunities for splitting things out. What's the engineer's estimate on the file of the demo? Uh, I don't have that. What's the question? One of the engineer's estimates on the demo. Is this? Um, is the Martin King building and also a Spencer project? Now, is it Spencer West and Spencer King? Or just Spencer? Okay. Yeah, so, and I think it's important to note also you can bid, you can split out your bids between the projects. So, there's one that um, we prefer to see just. Spencer Holmes on one part of your bid, and then Martin Luther King on the other. It's a tiny one. Like yeah. Is it going to be split up between Spencer West and Spencer East? Spencer West is the Martin Luther King building. Spencer East is, I, I'm sorry, I said Spencer. <laughs> Kennedy West is the Martin Luther King building. Kennedy East is the, uh, it's the yeah, it's the entire Spencer. Both East and West. Yes, both East. I understand your question. Now, um, when you say, like, the basement, which basement? That basement? Uh, There's both the lighting and asbestos in the building, and there are reports that will be available to you that are direct reports that will be finalized. There are two units that still need to be, uh, or there are some units that still need to be inspected, but you'll get a sense of the typical units. And the reason why those units have to be inspected is because you'll be able to be inspected. Now, how are you going to do it? Are you going to do that first, then? Uh, You'll have to ask the, the, con the, the contact on what he's thinking about, but I think, I think in general, um, you would probably do the lead for assessments. But you guys already have your own report? Yeah, there are, there are reports that will be available to you with the bid package. So the assessments have been done in draft form. There's a little bit of information left. We want to get this on the street um, to, get, to get bids. And there, there's changes that will be reconciled with the final reports. So the only thing we bid on asbestos or lead is the base. Correct. Not the report, but the base. Correct. Yeah. The, the reports will be a part, the draft reports will be a part of your package, the package will give you information to so you prepare your bids. So the lead was not on the what you want to base. Correct. Which I have been the reports lay out, lay out what, where there is a, 
for asbestos and lead, and the abatement proposal will be from a licensed abatement company based on the report, how you believe that can be abated. And the report will have some recommendations in there, so that'll help you guys as well. But I'm not an asbestos or lead specialist, but the report will be provided with it. You're in the right place. So everyone around these tables are are here to help in, in preparing bids, in seeking resources, and all all everything around the construction bidding process. So this is both. I'm, I'm talking about the opportunities here, but I think the most important people to talk to are the people that can help you prepare bids and give you support. Yeah. We have individuals that can help with the bidding process, and then we also have, um, we've got Catholic Charities, and we also have Nebraska Enterprise Fund that we also talk about financing these major construction projects also. Because when we're talking about something like the certification of weekly payroll reports, having to pay your employees weekly, that requires some expense on the front end prior to receiving payment for the project. So it's important also to talk to you the finance folks as well, get some more information about what they would recommend uh, you do to kind of structure and prepare for a project like this. I was just saying, I want to that the reach program is available for if you have questions about how we can't do the bidding for you, but we do have some engineers and architects that will volunteer their time to walk you through the steps and make sure that you haven't forgotten something. Um, and to uh, help teach you how to uh, do your own estimating. Um, and then also, as uh, folks are looking for resources um, in terms of how you can get the project done, we've got lots of great uh, folks to help with financing, but we can help be a conduit and point you to the right resource provider. Also, um, Will is the uh, contact here on the sheet. Um, He's available to answer questions as well. So the contact listed um, for BCM is, is available over the next um, three weeks or so to answer questions and tell the bits are And Tom, as an OHA, are willing to also help if people have questions about the forms or things like that. Harvey's a great reference for those kinds of things too. Um, we readily work with good packages and a lot of the contractors in this room as well. So we're available. Or the promise of the employees. <coughs> so there will be yeah. segments that I want to get the main uh, the main programs that will be available only in the forum or or the yes. well, there will be information sent out uh, in the activists if you sign the in um, that information will be sent to you about the the pre bid and then and all of the different aspects of where you can get plans and specs, things like that. And I saw you could, uh, I know you told us on um, where you are in the short payment um, group, or we'll plus some of those. Um, I believe there's a application to be filled on the reach program for the site. Yes. Is that a requirement for the field? City of Omaha, and over the next, you know, at the pre-bid conference, there'll be 
um, both digital USB and, and hard copies available. Yeah, so it's a little bit different. We've worked on other city projects before, but we Please, please sign in so you can get notices. <laughs> then I take the emails that are on the site in sheets, I'll take that information and I'll send you emails and any other follow up meetings that we have like this. So it is important to, to sign in and get your name on that list. So, uh, with that, I will kind of discuss the next step. So we've got the following. Providers are here. We've got nine different tables, kind of right in order. Starting with number one right there will be the curb appeal program contractor application. The list is available for that. And then the I and the OHA team will talk about section three and Davis Bacon compliance. SCB program is at table three. The REACH program is at table four. We've got business certification services at table five. Um, business and construction financing at table six, micro business services at table seven. Um, we've got some information about different workforce programs, including the CRED program um, at table eight. And then at table nine is where you can ask some more information and we talk about some of the other challenges. So I will let you kind of disperse a bit, please. But thank you very much for attending. Please make sure that you sign up.